<laughs> so are you turning it over to me right now? I'm turning it over to you. What does it mean to be authentic and transparent, and why is this utterly important in the beginning and throughout an intimate relationship? So I'm going to I'm going to respond to that before I respond. So in this now moment, Claudia and I are having a real relationship. In other words, this is a real now moment. Whereas supposedly it's supposed to be an interview. So just imagine if her and I were going on a date, or if you are going on a date with someone else. There's this idea in the head. Therefore, you try to be your best and be on and so forth. What I truly love, Claudia, with how you're sharing about my background is you are not reading from a script. Like I've heard people like, it's like I, it puts me asleep and I'm sure it puts listeners to sleep. I love how you just kind of allowed yourself to just be in that flow and be expressive however way it was supposed to happen without any idea attached to perfection. So I just wanted to bring that up. So that's an example. And here we're not even supposedly perfect and, and uh, getting right to this topic. This is a real now moment. Now just be aware, I'm going to answer this question, but this is also a new conversation with Claudia. Yes, we spoke two, three days ago, but she doesn't know how I'm feeling. I don't know how she's feeling. So when I show up, I want to show up with where she's at. She wants to show up where I'm at. And it's relating in this real now moment to what's going to happen now. And this is what really a co-creative conversation is and being authentic and being real and being accessible rather than in our heads and trying to fit some idea. And it's more easy. It's flowing and it creates passion. So I just want to share this as an example, as a segue into your, you know, the question. <laughs> Thank you. Totally. I agree. So did you want to respond to that? Because I just totally like shared how I feel. Uh, any, your response? <laughs> to that? So, yeah, I mean, I, it's just, I think it's my personality. I think people that are in this business just have a, a gift for the gab. And I, uh, I've never been a script kind of girl. I don't think uh, most entrepreneurs stick to scripts. So in that sense, um, I just, uh, I, I do like to connect authentically with people. This is cool to me, yeah. which is why this whole movement was born. Yeah. So now to the uh, answer your, so the reason why, what does it mean to be authentic and transparent and why it's utterly important is this, is that, so our shadows immediately when we start talking to somebody, we start, stuff comes up. For example, have you swiped and someone swipes you and there's a couple of like, you know, messages and immediately you go into he or she is the one or you have this idea where you're going to go and be. It's, you're making it up. That's your imagination. You're creating some fantasy, some idea, and you really don't know who this person is. Why would you even create that idea to then end up feeling let down? That's a shadow of like where your sense of self is about this idea versus realizing I don't know this person. Why am I not remaining curious? So right from the beginning, even that, uh, it's you know, how we act, what we're thinking, what we're on a date with a person. You, you could be with a man and you're like thinking, you know, he was on the phone one moment ago and seemed happy. And then he's here. He seems to be checked out. Like, like maybe he doesn't like me. Well, you can approach that different ways. And that is, is he preoccupied? Why do I care what he's thinking right now? Do I feel uncomfortable to say what's going on? Because it can happen like this. And this has happened with me. I had an exchange with someone who everything was really amazing. And then, like, just getting to know each other just before the date, we go out, and she's not present. And I said, I said, are you okay? It just seems like you're somewhere else. She said, well, my son was sick, and I had to get a babysitter, so I'm still, my mind is still on that. I went, oh. And I said, well, do you want to leave? I mean, is this a good time? And the fact that it's opened it up in that moment, she felt good, felt like she can share, and she started to smile and talk. And then from there, we built on that, say, conversation from there. It opened up that space. And yet, many people say, oh, it's just she's not into me. The chemistry is not there. It might be that person is experiencing something in that moment. And there's no longer this idea, I don't know who that person is. Or like, I just need to get to know him. The thing is that if you can't speak in that now moment, all you're going to do is create ideas of this person that you don't even know. And you're going to continue to create ideas of this person. And you might even walk away from an amazing relationship because you're not eliciting, you know, uh, something that he or she can say that is what they're experiencing in that now moment. That is why it's so important because otherwise you're just building more and more hidden transgressions about that person in yourself, which is, it's not because it's not going to work out. It's because you have ideas in your head that you're not getting out. 
1,000%. So um, that said, what would you consider that there, you know, what would you consider hidden red flags and shadows, you know, that most people are not aware of and sweep under the rug? So feelings of resistance, like uh, doubt without, you know, having a conversation with the person, you know, or with yourself, like, you know, for example, um, I went on a date with somebody who were still like really good friends and she lives really far, at least for me. And when we were hanging out at the beach, I said, you know, I'd be up front. I said, I think you're amazing. I said, but just because of my circumstances, having a child and she's a single parent also, just the distance, you know, geographically, it's not attractive. I go, and I was afraid to say that because I also know that's an idea. Anything can happen to where, you know, maybe I'll move out here, you move out, you'll move up where I'm at. But that's a conversation many people will not have. Right. And so here you are getting to know someone, investing time in it, and she is, this person's never, you know, planning on moving to your location and you're not either. You should know this stuff right away. And even if it's a thought, you know, if a person can't hold a container for you to share that, or if you're afraid, then you're not available truly for a mature, expansive relationship. You're still stuck in your ideas and just relating with yourself, not the other person. So, right. you know, relationships is about relating. It's about having that flow between that person to, so you can grow and, and, uh, become more than what you were when you showed up. I mean, it's about meeting interesting people, whether you're going to sleep with them or not, whether you're going to be with them forever or not. It's about meeting them where they are. And then from there, you gather information, you share what you feel, then you continue to create this. But if you can't, if you feel you can't, if you're afraid, that is, those are red flags because that stuff will show up in a relationship later on where you end up breaking up anyway and say, I sacrificed myself for you, or it was never that good. And a person saying, where was I when that conversation was happening in your head? Absolutely. You know, um, so those are red flags. Um, those are, even, those, yeah, those are huge red flags. You know, in, um, in matchmaking, we have, when we present the profiles and we give, it, give our clients this curated experience, some of those big questions we ask up front, like, do you want kids? And the answer is yes, no, or open, right? Because sometimes things that are deal breakers with some people might not necessarily be deal breakers with the right person, right? Exactly. Yes, exactly. It's, you, have to, you, just, you just never know. And the thing is, even though you have these linear qualifiers, such as kids, location, job, you know, whatever those things are, truly, as you know, most people end up with people where – they don't mark those boxes. It's just something about it. There's right. something about the flow. There's something you're curious about. So you just really never know. But of course, if you're like hardcore, you know, um, political on something, then maybe for you, your preference is someone who is aligned with you. Otherwise, you're always going to be bumping heads with that person, maybe. I understand that. But for the most part, that many of us, you know, when it comes to love, when it comes to relationships, is that love is really easy for in our heart. And it doesn't matter if we have different points of view about different things. It's just when we come together, we're in this heart space and we're connected and we feel good together. You know? I, mean, you, I mean, in a relationship, I feel like you can definitely agree to disagree. It's not, a, I, 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 I often, I always, I always encourage my clients to be open-minded, just be open-minded, see what the chemistry is like in person, just because they, like you said, one person is a, is a Republican and the other person is a, is a, is a liberal. It doesn't mean that it can't work. Sometimes, sometimes it can work. If people d agree to disagree and be respectful, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. I have a client recently, he said, you know, I speak 60% English. So, but what do you think, Claudia? If, if they, you know, if I meet somebody, does she have to be Latina or, I, or do you think love transcends all? I said, no, I think love transcends all. I think you should meet some American girls. I think you should meet, you know, some other uh, girls that only speak English. Don't you want to practice? Don't you want to get better at your English? And he said, yeah, actually I do. So, okay, so that opened it up to different types of people as well. If he wants to acclimate to American culture, then that's the best way to do it, right? Yes, and you know, it's interesting about this, people are not aware of this, and that is, there's a reason why that, oftentimes with older people um, that they communicate less. And when I say communicate less, that yes, there are older couples there who just don't know who each other are and they become like roommates. So by default, they have nothing to talk about. 
but then there's those who are still really in love and because they're connected in the same field of love that there's less to be said they're in the experience in other words when you're younger like your whole sense of self or you you think your sense of self is your career or your action or your ideas and your beliefs like for example again this is a, a generalization like there's different um uh phases we go through so like for example many of us when we're teenagers we're still like living underneath our parents house and then uh, if we become political or we have radical ideas that are completely oppositional of our parents we go into college and we have this like totally fuck you attitude like i'm going to be rebellious and i i noticed that with both men and women when we're in that stage we're like trying to get away from this this umbrella in which they grew up under like they're it's more like totally aggressive like, away from this and so then it's like trying to find who they are in the world when you get older and you become comfortable with yourself, uh, there is less to talk about because that shit is not who you are. It's like being right here and it's like, like just say if I was an old person and I'm going to use the example again, Claudia, like just imagine you and I being older in our 80s and I'm like this wholeness cup and this is this big black teacup. You're like, that's, that's Bill with this cup. Like, yeah. And you just enjoy seeing the steam. You, you enjoy seeing my face light up when I have my cup. And as simple as it might be, is that you're experiencing through me by watching me. You don't have to go, what do you think about blah, blah, blah. It's like you don't have to go in ahead to make more of the moment. You're in the experience. So when you get past like these like identities that you think you are and you're really connected to that heart space, you don't have to even communicate a whole lot. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So speaking of communication, um, what do you think is the lack of, uh, tell me, give me some examples of lack of presence and authenticity that kills a relationship. I'll give you one, a, a smartphone, okay? So they actually did a study, which I thought was so fascinating, that if a smartphone was anywhere on the table, that people were less likely to open up intimately. Isn't that fascinating? You probably know, I mean, you probably know more about more of this than I do, but even just the presence of a smartphone here, let's say here, um, made people less likely to connect. So I would love to hear uh, what? What? Huh? Did you say something? <laughs> I mean, you know, people, sudden, you know, people start checking my phone while you're talking, right? Um, so talk about. Uh, uh, by the way, I have it down like this, <laughs> and I when I am with people, like when I'm, like I'm somewhat in business mode, so it's okay to have this here, at least for me. But when I'm out and about with people, I rarely even have my phone out at all. It's just to, to not like be in habit or something like that. But I do agree with that. Like I feel as though that um, presence and authenticity kills most relationships. Most people don't really know what that means. And that would be what you just shared. So for example, if we're having dinner or something and you can feel like I'm waiting for a business call mm -hmm. or something, then you're, I'm not really with you. But another um, form of lack of presence would be this, because this recently happened. I was, uh, I went, I met somebody and uh, she mentioned that she had come from the corporate world, was kind of more of a type A person, but still is, you know, she's now say a massage therapist. And she was um, asking me questions and she is almost like a job interview. And it's like, she could not just leave the open spaces of like, of that flow and everything that she said, it's somewhat had of what she didn't want from the past. And what I mean by that, so she was showing up with kind of like a laundry list of like this idea of what she didn't want. Therefore, she was like in the, the energetic space of what she preferred not to be. And here I was saying, do you even see me? Because you're talking most about what you don't want and how you're hurt. Are you even here that you're with a guy who actually is holding space is not like that? Because you keep talking about exes and dates you've been on and you're not even here with me. That would be a lack of presence. Well, that's... You know, so that's a total sexy buster. Yeah, so it's like when you have so, if, if you can't be with that person, like because you have your old story, you're not present, or even this, you could be so caught up with the outcome of that date, you're not present, such as you're being so careful with what you say, or you're basically, basically dissecting everything he or she says because you want to trust them. You're not present. You're caught up in your head and your idea and going through your own conversation without that person being aware of it. So presence is about just being with that person in that experience in that now moment. Mm. 
You made me, you made me think of two things. Um, Number one, you know, I see so many of my of my lady clients that come in matchmaking, and they have a laundry list, just like you said, a laundry list of things that they don't want in a man. So I try and help them get to where, like, hey, how about what you do want in a man? Let's mm-hmm. let's let's start with that. How about you know the things that you do want, and, and let's start there and focus on the things. That, let go of all the stuff that you don't want. So that's that that's number one, and uh, number two. Shoot, I made a note. Uh, oh, relationship. Um, I've had a lot of my single friends say, um, God, you know, I go out on a date, and the first thing they want to say is like, do you want a relationship? And I'm like, how could you ask somebody that? You don't just come out and ask the person if they want a relationship. <laughs> I mean, you need to, first of all, vet them and see if you even want to be in a relationship with them, right? It's like, it's, it's like a job. You know, they may offer it to you, but you need to see, well, is this job right for me? Is the corporate culture right for me? What are the hours like? I mean, it's a two way street, right? People are assessing each other and seeing it's seeing how they might fit together, seeing how they might match together. Well, it's interesting. You said that because when I met up with that person, that it was more about those qualifiers versus being in a moment. I was so turned off that like for me, of course, those things could be important, uh, in a future, but if we don't vibe now, we're not going to vibe later. And I'm, I'm not waiting for someone's potential. So, you know, just how I approach, if I'm looking at these apps and swiping left or right, whatever, you know, the moment that I see a, a, mostly the text is about someone who treats me right, someone who does this for me to um, just don't be a player, know this, that, like it, it is to me, my experience, and it's been typically true because I do, this is my field. It's someone who's still like, you know, hanging on to her, someone who's trying to create control by using verbiage to try not to attract that. And typically vibrationally attracts it, it brings it right in. Or because I feel, and I just know this with my male friends or just people I know I think are healthy, women might consider these men masculine and, you know, we're busy and so forth. We don't want to have to work so hard to get through the baggage. We already have a schedule. I'm already a full-time dad. So if I have to coach and sell myself to you to get past your past, it's just too much work. It's not, it's not in a flow for me. So I want to be able to meet you in your heart where you're available already and present to what you truly want. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to come home to somebody who's going to soothe you. I mean, of course, no relationship is perfect, but they have to be a place of friendship. And it has to feel like, I, I feel like some of my really good friendships, just easy and mm-hmm. easy. Yes. So I um, want to ask a couple more questions before we have to wrap up. Um, t- tell me why transparency is utterly important in modern dating versus 20 to 50 years ago. What's different now than it was back in the past? So um, the, what kept people together were the social norms. In, in other words, for example, for procreation, uh, it, for cultural validation. So um, women were... Uh, shunned for being single or divorced in their 30s, say, 1930s, 1940s. There was a negative connotation around it. Um, that there, there was basically, um, I guess you say, kind of social norms that kind of supported staying together. Uh, there was less resources and so forth. So people were not necessarily happy. It's just, it's all they knew. They didn't have the internet to connect with other people, um, they were not educated. We've come a long ways, you know, like just, I mean, for, for example, let's just, for example, in mean, 1950s, I mean, it was an outrage to see, you know, Elvis moving his hips and get, get the camera up. And we've come a long ways. Oh my God, it's too much. You know, he's gonna, his penis is going to pop in the eye. No, he's triggering your own sexuality and, and you're just not comfortable with it. Right. So, you know, we're more, now more open uh, about many different things. We've come a long ways. You know what I mean? Like, look at the, the bathing suits back then. Oh my God, the one pieces. <laughs> All the way down to the knees. Yeah, like to, to now, like we've come a long ways. We literally have stripped a lot of stuff off. So we're more aware of our options and choices. So you can't like take your parents' model, your grandparents' model, and think this will make it fit. You have to, because the thing is that you, you know, women can be more open sexually. Uh, men could, could, you know, stay at home maybe now and maybe not work. It doesn't mean that women are going to be attracted to him, but it's not like people are like surprised now. Oh my God, he's a stay at home mom or like he's a lazy man. I mean, now it's maybe more common. Like 
you kind of can pick and choose what you want to be and do. So you have to create your own reasons to be in a relationship. What works for you, your, what adds value to your life, not what your parents did and so forth. Because in each moment when you show up that that person's a new person and you are, you are also, what I mean by that is this, you can't show up and be on all the time. You can't get married and sit there and say, I love you, Bill. I love you, Mary. And we're going to be happy every day. And you stay together. And like, uh, remember, it's just the paperwork. It's an idea that we're going to be passionate. And then Bill's working at this job that he started in college. And he's realizing, fuck, I kind of hate this job. And I'm afraid to tell Mary because we're supposed to get a house. And like, so he's like working hard. And then it's killing his energy. And um, he's, uh, it's killing his energy. And he's, Hold on a second. Like it's a course, like a UPS guy's here. Um, can you leave the package? <laughs> I love it. Oh God. Okay. Just since this is live here. All right. Get more real than this. Okay. Stand by while Dr. Ray Doctor receives package. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And it saw my shorts. Hey, everyone saw me in my shorts. All right. I Listen, mentioned that. You're so, he's born and raised a Southern California boy. So, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my American Express card, it, I got a new one because the other one got hacked. So anyway, <laughs> hey, authenticity. Isn't it interesting? You know what? I, I'm all for it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm all for authenticity. I, I shared with uh, Claudia that I had uh, done a few interviews while I was in my boxers. <laughs> and uh, on, on Ustream... <laughs> I forgot to turn the camera off and I got up in my boxers and I'm walking around doing some stuff and I see this text and, this, and it was like, hey, I go, you got a good body, but it's, I'm not sure if you want to know that I can still see you. Well, at least you had boxers on this time. Although yeah. for, the late, for our lady audience, maybe it would be better not to have the boxers on. The <laughs> same. So, <laughs> so, so, so back to this you know, moment with this real now moment just happened. Stuff happens. It's supposed to happen. And, and how I respond to it. So in this interview, I can act. I can be professional. Like I know what I'm talking about. How would you feel if I turned around and went, not now. And, and I was rude to this person or the waiter. So the thing is that every moment, people are watching how you are in each moment. You cannot pretend to be a particular person. I could have reacted a particular way. And that's what you feel in this moment. Are you going to talk about it? Are you going to open up to it? Or are you going to say, I don't want to go there. We're, we're, we're real in each moment. And what I was talking about, the guy, Bill, who does not like his job, it kills off his energy. His wife is like feeling, why are you not attracted to me? She's thinking it's him. It's more that because he doesn't like his job. Now, now we have more opportunities. Now it's not like we're programmed to work the same job and so forth. And I'm using this as an example because a lot of fear and concerns of how we should be back then, people would play that out. And they did stay together a lot longer than people do now. But all those ideas don't work anymore. Yeah. Both men and women are expressive. Both men and women uh, want a lot of the same things. This is what equality is all about. Yeah. So today, you, know, you don't know what a man wants. You, today, you don't know what that man you're with wants. And right. today, you don't know what that woman. We're so different. We were maybe more cookie cutter 20, 30, 40 years ago by control, ignorance to whatever else. That was more identity. It's not us anymore. I mean, I'm not even a typical coach or person with a doctorate. I mean, I swear I'm more open, I'm more accessible. Whereas, don't forget, like, don't forget the rock band part, portion of it. I'm a singer That's in the 80s favorite. tribute band also. <laughs> so um, I remember, by the way, that a client ended up at one of my shows and um, she was performing and and not for, i was performing and she was dancing and such and she saw me and she said i i had a hard time wrapping my mind around that you act like a goofball and you're also a doctor and it was like basically clashing against her box and i remember that and yet, yet it was we still were able to work together um but that would be an example like we have these ideas why couldn't someone who's a has a doctor in clinical psychology play in the 80s fan uh, why can't a guy who is a corporate type of guy also be in meditation or um, is more expressive? I mean, we could be at all yes. rather than these old ideas. We're, we're breaking apart from that. Yes. So you're in a really amazing opportunity to co-create what you want. And the man or woman you want 
wants the same thing, meaning that they want to create something that's ex expansive and exciting for them. And the only way of doing that is by putting it out there fearlessly, what you love, what's your passion, what turns you on, mm -hmm. and you know, hoping that the other person uh, uh, reciprocates. And that's really the mm -hmm. only way. So with that said, we have to wrap up. We're out of time. I, um, do you want to tell us real quick, real fast about your, your free gift? Okay. Are you going to share it or you want me? Go ahead. You, you, uh, you, don't, you don't want to read the script? So you happiness, sound like a robot? Happiness decoded. I believe that you could probably articulate it better than I could. Okay. So um, happiness decoded, uh, it's a book. You can get the, the download. Uh, so this book, what it does is it, it breaks down all your relationship paradigms, the old ones that are not working for you, meaning that it's just not like this quick three-page PDF thing you get like, oh, it's just for advertisement. It's an actual simple short book that you can get through about an hour and a half, and it has exercises to go through so you can kind of create more of the relationship that you want. It, it talks about areas in which that may be exposed to you, like influence you about relationships and even career, which you're not aware of. And so, you know, the result is happiness. And who it, when we're happy, what do we attract? Happy happy people. <laughs> so. I love it. Dr. Ray, thank you so much for being on. It was such a pleasure. And uh, we'll catch up when I'm in LA. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.